In this series of videos I'm attempting to repair and restore a PDP 1134 vintage computer. In this series so far I've been through the basic machine, stripped it down and I've put together this test jig using the CPU backplane and the power supply. Been through the power supply, uh, been through most of the boards at least once and um, I got to the point where I was trying to boot the machine from a floppy disk drive that I'd restored and that was an RX02 dual 8 inch drive and um, what was happening was when I tried to uh, instigate the bootloader for that particular drive with a floppy disk in the drive it was starting the drive uh, running I did monitor the output of the SRAMs on the um, the, drive, the control card of the uh, drive and there was definitely data coming out of both SRAMs so it was definitely reading some data now it doesn't really matter what the data is the process should be to read the first sector or two depending on the uh, bootloader in question and it should load that into memory the RAM of the PDP so it was starting the process and there was definite uh, definite interaction between the uh, floppy disk drive and the PDP um, but it wasn't succeeding data was never um, arriving or being copied into the RAM on the PDP moreover what I ended up with each time I tried to do this is a value of a 2 showing on the uh, display of the console now that's normally a sign that it's failed to execute an instruction and um, that I think is really where the problem lies now I don't think that the problem or at least the current problem is in the floppy disk drive or at least at the time uh, I was showing the last video now since then the machine has developed some more faults so judging from some of the comments uh, on previous videos I may have made this appear that it all plugged together and worked first time and uh, it really didn't there's been quite a few faults with this and it has taken quite a bit of time to get to this point and it's been a bit like trying to build a house on quicksand I'd get uh, two steps forward one step back two steps forward and that's how it's been all the way through but that is fairly typical of this type of machine and it's becoming more of an issue as these machines get older and there is a particular um, manufacturing issue with these particular machines that is starting to cause problems on a more regular basis and um, it's on the uh, back plane you get corrosion in the uh, wire wrap pins they weren't gold plated pins to start with and you get uh, corrosion on the wire wrap wires themselves but also the soldering of the pins to the backplane PCB can be fairly poor and uh, there are quite a few traces on the PCB it's not all wire wrap the PCB itself does carry quite a few of the uh, traces and um, what I've been finding is that depending on um, how I install the boards and not, not necessarily the order they're in but just how I install them um, where the backplane sitting I'll get different behavior of the machine and what it's doing now after I tried loading the um, or booting from floppy disk so what I'm getting now if I try and boot this up is odd behavior so it'll um, just stop part way through some code uh, or more usually it will just stop when it tries to run the first instruction so it's doing this uh, repeatedly it's obviously not uh, working properly I can sometimes uh, read and write to RAM with it set up like this um, but I believe that there are several faults on the CPU cards I don't have any uh, spares to be able to uh, test them and also I believe that the console interface card has various faults but again I don't have one to swap out to test that um, but I think most of the issues come down to the um, back plane. If I try and run uh, the uh, console program, the console firmware, then mostly it fails to start. In fact, it always now fails to start. But what actually happens varies depending on uh, whether I move the boards about. And I don't think it's the actual contact fingers. I think it's the uh, wire wrap pins not being properly soldered to the 
backplane PCB. That being the case, it's extremely difficult to repair these because the wire wrap wires in the way. You can't get to the pins to resolder them. You can't go from the top because obviously the socket's in the way and um, the only real solution is to completely strip all the wire wrap wires off it and re-wire wrap it. It's an incredibly uh, error prone uh, thing to do and the chances of um, doing that successfully is fairly remote so it's not really something uh, I would do other than it being a last resort. So the next step with this is to try and see if it is a backplane issue. So um, I use one of these, this is just a, a little uh, adapter I made, it plugs into one of the sockets. I start at the uh, A socket, put this in and then I go through and I check to see if all the pins, that's both the um, B pins, the B slot and all the SPC slots and I check to make sure they're all connected to what they should be connected to. So we know what's on A and B and I look to see if these particular connections are successfully carried across to each uh, row in the backplane. And that will tell me if there's anything wrong with the backplane. It's a bit of a tedious and time consuming thing to have to do. Um, but there is no real uh, better way of doing it. There's um, the, the problem when you try uh, running uh, test programs is it will depend on which particular pins may or may not be making contact at the uh, point when you test it. And as soon as you move anything, uh, it can obviously break contact. Now, unfortunately, you do get the same issue uh, with the uh, with, with testing and buzzing out the backplane. Uh, so what I tend to do is sit the backplane on a bit of foam, so it's sitting on the pins, so I can move it around a little bit, it kind of wiggles the pins about. And each time I test one of the pins, I move it around slightly to see if the connection is relatively stable. It still doesn't guarantee it's going to work all the time. Um, but it's normally a fairly good way of uh, at least detecting the obvious faults. Um, before I do that, I'll get it under the microscope and have a, a look to see if I can see anything obvious. Um, but that's the next step, is to try and figure out if the backplane on this um, has any faults. And from that point on, I'll go back into the uh, CPU. The console works fine, it seems to work fine uh, on its own. If you take the other cards out, it seems to work fine. Um, but as I said before, the uh, common factor when you plug other cards in and you get faults is the backplane. It could be the cards, of course. It might be all the cards have uh, one fault or more and the interaction is what's causing this. Um, but I need to get this working a bit more reliably before I can really move on and uh, go back to trying to boot from a floppy disk. OK, well, unfortunately, I didn't get very far before I realised this backplane has some serious issues. Um, just looking at the first slots A and B, um, out of those connectors, there's only um, 18 on each side, so 36 times 2. So out of those 72 connections, uh, I found 14 that were intermittent and they'd make and break depending on uh, how you touch them. And um, looking at this under the microscope, you can see that there are some serious issues with this backplane. So you can see that um, in this area, uh, just four pins in the same area uh, are um, almost completely unsoldered. They just uh, flap about and they're not really making contact. And it gets worse every time you plug a board in, it just opens up the hole further. And this is not isolated, it's um, pretty much the same on all the pins across the entire backplane. So we're getting the same thing here. This is just the next pins along. And they're all pretty much the same. They just um, didn't seem to be very well soldered in the first place. There's not enough solder, so there's no proper fillet uh, that's been built up to protect the joint. And there's quite a lot of force on these connectors when boards are pushed in and out. And um, also it means that uh, moisture can get in there and, and cause corrosion, which is what's happened here. And that erodes away the solder. And uh, also the same with the wire wrap wire itself. Um, about half of them are fairly badly corroded, in fact, probably more than half. And it's not, it's fairly uncommon to see this. It's supposed to be silver plated um, wire that's used, and clearly this wire is, um, the plating has completely eroded off this for some reason, or 
uh, it was never there to start with you can see that there is a lot of corrosion on this so again the pins are not properly connected to the board and the wire wrap wires are not properly connected to the pins so uh, this uh, back plane is uh, undoubtedly causing a lot of the issues I've been having and uh, the boards almost certainly have faults as well and um, it's really now a case of trying to decide what to do with this uh, if they were gold plated pins then chances are it would be fine or it would at least be relatively easy to repair um, I could strip all the wire wrap wires off and uh, re, uh, relay it but uh, that's probably the best part of uh, three or four days work I'm not sure I want to invest that much time uh, in this um, considering the state of the board so um, have a think about this and try and decide uh, what to do with it I can only assume this has been somewhere fairly humid um, to have this much uh, corrosion built up on the underside of the back plane uh, unfortunately the second back plane of course is different this is the CPU back plane so I can't just swap to the other back plane and use that instead and um, as I said I also don't have any uh, spare cards to substitute to uh, test whether all the problems are caused by this so uh, I may spend you know, I could spend a week getting this back plane sorted out just to find that uh, all the boards are you know, toast as well now it is repairable I just need to decide um, on the approach I'm going to take to try and get this machine resurrected uh, but um, obviously, obviously uh, until the back plane is sorted out there's no point going back and working further on the boards.